Hey there, welcome to this video and in this particular video we are going to talk about how Spring Security works. Now if you are new to this channel and if you are not aware, this video is a part of a complete series on Spring Security. Well it's a series wherein I cover Spring Security in a very hands on way. Okay? You can find the link to the entire playlist in the description below where you will find the videos before this video and after this video. Okay, so you can watch the entire playlist. Also, if you are new, I would highly encourage you all to subscribe to this particular channel and turn on the bell notification icons because that's the way using which you can stay connected with me and you can get notified as to when I upload or bring in any such new course or any such new video. Okay, so be sure to do that. Also, talking about this video now, in this particular video, we are going to talk about how Spring Security works. Now, if you integrate Spring Security into your project, there are a lot of things that happen in the hindsight. Okay, there are a lot of components that Spring Security has. Okay, and all of these components work together to secure your application. And it's really important that you understand what these components are, how you can make use of them, and what does each component do in the entire process? Okay, so all these things are really important. Okay, and uh, do watch this video till the very end because there is lots of valuable knowledge that you are going to gain from this. All right, so yeah, that's about what we are going to cover. Also, if you are watching this video, so do leave a comment right now and let me know where you are joining in from, what's a good name, what do you do currently, and let me know what sort of videos I should be bringing in for you all. Okay, so that's something that I would be expecting and I would be reading the comments personally. Okay, so without a further ado, let's jump right in. Thank you. Hey there. So it's time that we talk about how Spring Security works. So in a normal Spring Boot application, you will have your controllers over here and you will have requests coming in and response going out, okay? So this is the entire diagram that explains the working of Spring Security. Don't get overwhelmed by the diagram. It's actually simple, I'll break it down for you, okay? So like I was saying, you have controllers here, okay? And you have request and response going out, okay? Request coming in, response going out. Now, when your request comes in, it first goes through a series of filters over here, okay? So here you have filters. This is one filter, second filter, third filter, so on. There are many filters, okay, depending on what you have configured, okay? And your request has to go through this series of filters known as filter chain, and then it reaches the controller, okay? And controller is where your actual application code resides, okay? Now these filters have a specific job related to their own configuration, okay? And if you have Spring Security configured, then you will have a filter called as authentication filter, okay? So without security, you will also have filters exist in your application, but these won't be the security related filters, okay? But when you configure security, you will have some filters added which will be the security related filters, okay? And one of these security related filters, like I said, is authentication filter over here, okay? Now, what is authentication filter? So authentication filter will be intercepting the requests that are meant to do login, okay? So that are login requests, and these requests will contain username and password or any sort of authentication information that needs to be validated, all right? So, so far, what are filters? Filters are nothing but a, some code, okay, that reside before the controller and your request has to pass through it, okay? They will intercept your request for some sort of processing. And you have authentication filter if you have Spring Security configured in your project, okay? What does authentication filter do? Authentication filter will intercept the authentication request and what it will do is it will grab the username and password and create authentication object from them, okay? And this object is basically a way to package the credentials, okay? So first the authentication object is created, okay? Because everything within security works in the form of the authentication object, 
So that object is important first, okay? And that is being created here. Once the object is being created, the object is being handed over to the authentication manager over here, okay? Now, authentication manager is someone who decides what to do with these credentials, okay? So what this authentication manager will do is it will delegate this task, okay, of authenticating the user to someone else, okay? So authentication manager, like I said, it decides what to do with these credentials, okay? And it'll say that, hey, what should I do with the credential? I should authenticate. Now to authenticate whoever has sent this request, I need a authentication provider, okay? So authentication manager decides that, hey, he needs to authenticate and for that, he'll need a authentication provider. Now authentication provider, what is authentication provider? So authentication provider is someone who is responsible for checking whether the given username and password or whether the given credentials are correct or not, okay? And for authentication provider to validate the credentials, it needs two things. One is password encoder, and then it needs user details service. So we'll talk about each one of them. So we'll talk about password encoder first, okay? What is password encoder? So what happens is whenever the password is passed in, or whenever the user credentials are passed in, okay, they are always encoded, right? They will be encoded using some form of encryption, right? And to decrypt the password, you need to do some sort of like processing over there. And that is what password encoder helps you with, okay? So it helps you encode the entered password and it will help authentication provider with the same. So that authentication provider can take care of the rest, okay? So this is about password encoder, okay? And what is user details service? So this is called by the authentication provider to load the user details. And it can call methods like load by username and all, and it will load the details like username, password, and what all roles does this user have in the system, okay? And it will load it from a source of data. Okay, so if your data is being stored in the database, it will load it from there, okay? And what happens is, this particular service will load the user information, okay? And it will return this particular information, which includes everything that system needs to know about the user, including their stored passwords, roles and all, okay? It will get this user object and it will convert this object into user detail object. Okay, so the object that is returned by user detail service is user detail object, all right? And then this particular thing over here, authentication provider will have the user detail. So authentication provider will confirm if the username and password are correct, okay? And uh, once it is validated that the username and password are correct, it will create a complete authentication object. Okay, so authentication object earlier that existed, which was created by the authentication filter that might not have some information like roles and all, okay? So once the authentication is successful and it's confirmed by the authentication provider, the authentication object is populated with more details like roles and all, okay? And then this object is handed over back to the authentication manager here that, hey, this is the object, updated object, and uh, this is the user that you wish to authenticate, and this user has been authenticated, okay? Then this object is returned to authentication filter, and then the security context is set, okay? So what is security context? So security context is a sort of context that is available throughout the duration of the request, okay? So it's a context wherein the information about the authentication is stored. So where does the detail of the authenticated object reside now? It resides in the authentication object, right? Right. So this authentication object was created by filter and the details, more details were populated by authentication provider. So then this object is set into security context and it will be available throughout the request, okay? And throughout the request, this object is referred as to what the user is allowed to do in the system and what it's not allowed to do in the system. Okay, so like I mentioned that uh, 
when the authentication is being done, the authentication object is being populated with what? With roles, right? And these roles are being used by the application to dictate as to what the user is allowed to do and what the user is not allowed to do, okay? So this is how the entire flow works, okay? Here, how the flow works is if I have to reiterate, user, you as a user enter the username and password, okay? And uh, it, it goes through a series of filter chains over here, okay, filters over here. And one filter will be authentication filter, okay? And then an authentication object is created here, okay? Authentication manager takes this object and asks authentication provider to verify it, okay? Then authentication provider will use user detail service and password encoder to fetch your details and password encoder will compare the passwords and everything. If everything matches, okay, the authentication provider will confirm and your details are saved in the authentication object. Like the authentication object is updated with the rules and all. And the security context will be populated with the authentication object. And then you are allowed to access the controller and the code executes. And during the request, this context is referred as to what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do, okay? So I hope this is making sense. Now, when we talk about authentication provider, here I've mentioned DAO authentication provider, okay? So this is one of the common authentication providers used, and this is used when you wish to validate the users against the database, okay? So normally you have a database where the de user details are stored. And if you want to do that, you can make use of DAO authentication provider, okay? And it relies on this particular service here, user details service to fetch the user details and then compare it with the provided credentials against these details, okay? So this is one kind of provider, but there are many providers like in-memory authentication provider is one of the providers, okay? So if you're storing your data into memory and not in the database, okay, then you can make use of in-memory authentication provider. There is LDAP authentication provider, okay. LDAP, if you're aware of lightweight directory access protocol, okay. So if you wish to uh, integrate LDAP security, then you have to make use of that provider. You have JDBC authentication provider, okay. So there are a few authentication providers that exist. So depending on where your user details are coming from or where they are stored, you will use the appropriate authentication provider, okay? And you can see the methods over here. So authentication manager will call the authenticate method, okay? You have matches method to match the password, load by username. These are all methods find by username, okay? These are all methods that exist that are called by the respective components, okay? So this is about the overview of Spring security. One crucial thing to remember over here is the concept of filters over here. So you're going to see filter, authentication filter, authentication manager, authentication provider, password encoder, user detail service, all of this in the code, okay? So it's important that you understand these and the roles. And if you still have any confusion, don't worry. Uh, everything will be clear once we start coding things, okay? But it's important that you understand the concepts at a high level. So that's about the working of Spring security. I hope this was useful.